Let's take a look at Pac-Man. Pac-Man is the package manager. That's where the name comes from. On Arch, Artix, Manjaro, Parabola, pretty much every Arch-based Linux distribution that's out there. And Arch is obviously a very popular distro. There's been a lot of spin-offs of it. So it doesn't hurt to be familiar with its package manager, especially if you're coming from a distro like Mint that uses APT because the commands with Pac-Man are a little bit more elegant and maybe difficult to catch on to if you've been used to apt for a while. So Pac-Man S stands for sync. It's pretty much what you would use for installing or updating programs. So it's pretty much the equivalent of apt-get update. And it also functions as apt-get install when you use it with a package name. So sudo Pac-Man s chromium oh and of course you need to do everything as root what this is going to do is it's going to install the chromium package or at least it's going to prompt you uh, to confirm if you want to install the chromium package because there's some fairly relevant things you should know like there's the total list of packages it's going to install with it and then the total download size so you can hit yes to continue with the installation or no to terminate the command. sudo pacman syu will sync all your repositories and then update all of your programs to the latest versions in the repository. So this is a combination of the pacman s command and then the y switch which syncs all of the repositories and then u which updates all the programs. You could run these programs or, or you could run these command switches individually, like you could do an SY and then an SU, but I don't recommend doing that. They're really meant to all be run together. And this SYU switch is also the equivalent of sudo apt-get update and sudo apt-get upgrade. And this is a prime example of where the elements of Pac-Man really comes into play. I mean, if we just compare If we just com compare these two commands, obviously this uh, Pac-Man SYU is much less verbose than the apt-get update and apt-get upgrade. Now, sometimes something new will have been updated or will have been added to the package database very recently. Um, I mean, stuff is constantly getting added to Arch's database, but if you want a package that was literally just added, then running the Pac-Man SYU might not actually add that package to your repository. And the reason why is that when you run Pac-Man SYU, there is an update cache that gets stored. And if you run that update again within, I think it's like a couple of hours, then you'll be pulling from that cache and not the upstream database. So to override that cache uh, and check for packages anyway, you can do SYYU. And that second Y will just basically ignore the cache and then pull from the upstream. I really don't recommend doing this all the time though because it will make the command take longer to run. But if a package doesn't show up after syncing, then it's a good first step. Then we have Pac-Man SS, so that's a capital S followed by a lowercase s. That will search for packages in the repository. So if I wanted to search for everything that contained Vim in it, this is gonna go ahead and print out everything that has Vim either in the title or in the description. And you can do regex searches for it as well. So if I wanted to search for everything that began with Vim, I could just add that caret in front of it and then it'll do the same thing um, just using regex. So if you wanted to list more detailed information about a package, you can do that with SI. So if I wanna see additional information about Vim, like what license it's using, how much space it's going to take up before I actually go into that install prompt and what dependencies are required, I can just do Pac-Man SI Vim and it'll print out all of these details for me. Now, if you wanted to search for packages that are already installed on your system, 
Uh, well, first you can do sudo pacman q. And by default, this will list all of the packages that are on your system. And if I wanted to search for a specific program or a partial string of a program, I could just pipe the output of this into grep and add something like xorg. And then that'll give me all of the packages that have xorg in their name. Or you could just output this to a file somewhere. So if I wanted to do like sudo pacman q, um, we'll just say file. Then I can vim into file. This is just gonna create that same output, but in a file. So this is gonna be a lot easier to search for things. Um, or really, this is part of what you would do to just create a package installation script. So if you already like know, or if you want to just have a list of all the packages that you're using, you can do this, and then you're already halfway to creating a command that'll go ahead and install all of these packages onto your system. Now, you may have noticed that running Pacman Q has displayed a lot of packages on my system that you might not recognize. And this is because Pacman Q also includes dependencies. So if you want to see explicitly what you have installed and not just all of the dependencies and all the base files that come with it as well, you want to do Pacman QE. So if I were to do, um, it's this word count. L. So this is going to basically tell me how many packages are installed on the system because I'm piping it into word count. So you see with the Q switch, we get 563. But when we do the QE switch, it drops down significantly lower to 122. Now to remove packages on your system, you could just run pacman R and then vim or whichever package you want to install and that would remove it from your system, but I don't actually recommend that you remove a package with just this option. The reason why is oftentimes when you install a program, it'll install a lot of dependencies with it, which are just other packages and libraries that the program needs to run. And if you just use R, this is going to leave all of those packages on your system. So if you don't want to leave that clutter behind, you should also include a lowercase s after the R, and that will remove dependencies as well. And you also want to use the N switch after the R as well. And what this will do is remove any system config files associated with the program that you're removing. So the full command that you want to use whenever you're removing packages on an Arch-based distribution is sudo pacman rns and then the name of your package. And finally, you may be wondering why my output from pacman has all of this colored text. And the reason why is because I edited this file that's located in your Etsy folder called pacman.conf. So in order to get the color text, because by default you're not going to have it, you just need to find this color variable here and then uncomment it. And then once you save this and refresh your terminal, all of your pacman commands are going to have the um, colored text like you've seen. Uh, we'll do QE. It's gonna have all of the color text like you've seen here in my system. It just looks nicer and kind of makes it easier to see what you're looking at because I know when, whenever I see a sea of text that's all the same color just for whatever reason, it's more difficult for me to read. So that's it for this one, guys. Now you know pretty much everything you need to know about Pac-Man. Take this knowledge and use it to build a glorious Arch-based system.